What's going on guys? Welcome back to the show. Today we are talking about why I quit my cut after three days. I think it was on the fourth day. Uh, and I'll start by saying that this is just my personal experience, personal anecdote. And I just thought it would be helpful to hear where I'm coming from when I think these things through for myself. It's obviously some of the, gonna be some of the same questions that I'll ask myself that I would ask a client that I would hope you, know, you guys listening are asking yourselves when you're considering your situation when it comes to your calorie deficit. And you might not come to the same you know, conclusions that I did. Obviously, I think that there's a wide range of where people are coming from, a wide range of goals that you might have, sources of motivation. And so again, this is just my perspective from me talking about me, not an attempt to give blanket advice as to like exactly what everybody should do with their cut. Um, you know, one thing I would say though is that the, there are a lot of people out there who are at a healthy body weight and they're trying to get leaner. They're trying to get shredded. They want to see some muscle definition and that's fine. There's, there is literally nothing inherently wrong with wanting to lose weight to kind of improve aesthetics in some way or see some muscle definition or anything like that. There's nothing wrong with that. But there are people out there who are a already healthy body weight range and they are looking to lose weight for, let's say, non-health related reasons. Um, I think that there are other people who have like, you know, more of a health pursuit. And I'm not saying either is inherently better than the other, but I'm certainly in that category where I'm at a healthy body weight right now. And my motivations were not, you know, I want to improve some health marker or I want to improve some, you know, some other facet of my health. My goal was purely for, well, my goal actually is kind of, an important part as to why this didn't last so long. Um, you know, people talk about like, you know, what is your why? You know, like basically just like some annoying phrase for like, why are you doing this? And for me, I guess it's maybe two or three fold. Uh, Jenna was doing, Jenna's been doing a cut, my fiance, she's been doing a cut and she took a diet break. And at the end of the diet break, she was like, you know what, I'm gonna do a few more weeks. And so I thought, you know, that might be helpful to do with her. If there was ever a time, there's just one small reason. It's like, hey, if she's gonna go into a cut, then maybe that would be helpful if you also do that and you're not, you know, eating way more food in front of her. Not that we have any issues with that, but I do think it's helpful when, you know, spouses are, you know, people in the same household are on the same page. So I thought, okay, that's one small tick in the box of like, maybe you do this with her and you do it for a couple of weeks because I don't really have uh, ambitions of doing a long cut. I knew that it was gonna be something relatively short. And I thought, okay, if she's gonna do a couple more weeks, maybe I'll just jump in with her. Also, I've been wanting to do some things from an academic standpoint, so test out some things. Uh, maybe, you know, my goal was to do a bit more of an aggressive diet with an intermittent sort of dieting where I would be a little bit more aggressive for a short period of time. Um, obviously, the whole thing itself was gonna be a short period of time, so maybe it was gonna be like two weeks of more aggressive dieting, maybe one or two weeks out, and then maybe two weeks of aggressive dieting and then transition out for good. My goal was just to practice. I know that I, I walk clients through this all the time. I think it's important for coaches to kind of immerse ourselves in what the clients are going through. And so I thought academically speaking, I'd like to try some of this stuff so I have a good experience doing it. Um, and the truth is those aren't amazing reasons that are gonna really help you rationalize being uncomfortable, like, or at least they weren't for me. Uh, at, the, at, at the time where I started to feel un, uh, discomfort, uncomfortable, like, you know, you have to kind of rationalize, is the juice worth the squeeze? Those weren't really important reasons. Jenna is totally fine doing this without me. Academically, while those are things that I do want to pursue, there are other things that I'm doing in my life that are also really important. This isn't my, you know, the only thing I'm pursuing from a business experience perspective is going through this cut so that I can immerse myself in that. Um, you know, and I guess truth be told, um, you know, I had already also been going through a little bit of my own shit lately. I know we all have stress and yes, I'm not, this is not a, I'm a cry for help. Uh, but we're, we're being totally honest. I had been at this time, cause this was maybe 10 days prior to when you're listening to this, a um, little bit burnt out from social media and having a little bit of that like dip in, I think all entrepreneurs in air quotes and like specifically all online coaches as well go through periods, no matter how much knowledge you do have, where you're just kind of, you go through a bit of imposter syndrome, you go through a bit of like low confidence about what you're doing. And for whatever reason, that all together was kind of hitting me at once. Uh, and so that combined with some other stuff, I was carrying a little bit more stress than I normally would have liked given the fact that I was about to start the deficit. Um, and so yeah, I decided I was gonna do three to four weeks of slightly more aggressive dieting. However, when you're already relatively lean, everything you do to get leaner is already aggressive. You're already, calories are already gonna be, already gonna be relatively lower because you're already relatively lean. Uh, and you're gonna have to do a lot for a little, so to speak, because there's not a lot of body fat for you to lose. And so the kind of effort that you need to put in has a relatively smaller return on that effort, you know, poundage wise. 
Um, my goal was maybe aiming to lose one to two pounds a week and then go back to this like gain taining phase that I've been in, which again, people talk about like gain taining or, or recomp. Like I'm at a place right now where I'm not actively trying to, you know, push my physique to the next level. I was more so, I'm, I'm way more in the academic side of things right now where I'm actually just trying to learn and experiment with my own body. And that's sort of more of what this was. And so I brought my calories down by roughly a third, uh, 33%. And I don't use a percentage when making that decision. That's just mathematically what had happened. Um, I knew where my maintenance calories were. I knew from past cuts where they would probably have to be if I was going to lose at the rate I wanted to lose. And it just so happened that it worked out to about a 33% cut. Um, I guess, specifically speaking, I was eating, you know, 35 to 3,700 calories and I brought, so let's say an average of 3,600 calories. And I brought my calories to the 24 to 2500 range, which is a reduction of 1200, just roughly a third of what I was eating. But going down 1200 calories is a big chunk. 33% uh, is no joke. Uh, and when I was eating 36, going to 24 was a big jump. A lot of people are like, oh my God, that's you know more than my maintenance calories, whatever. But okay, I'm not you. And, and that's not the point of this podcast, not to have that sort of comparison here. But that was a big reduction in calories, which obviously brings with it physiological things, but also brought with it lifestyle changes, obviously the way I was eating and, and all things that I'm well aware are going to happen, things that I knew and chose were going to happen. You know, um, something I often say is that this is voluntary and this is temporary and that those are two very important things to remember when you are beginning and going through your deficit phase is that you're the one who chooses this. You choose the pros, you choose the cons and you do so because, you know, in that moment, the juice is worth the squeeze. And so over the first two days, I think I had lost several pounds because that's a big chunk of calories going down. And so, yes, a lot of those pounds, I think I lost like three or four pounds um, in the first day or two. And that's all obviously almost entirely non-fat weight, water weight, glycogen, uh, you know, mostly those two stomach content. Uh, and, and that's neither here nor there, but that was cool. I mean, I knew that that was going to be a big deficit, but it's good to get that feedback. And so, okay, I'd lost several pounds right away. Um, which I kind of knew was going to happen. And to be honest with you, in the first two days, I felt okay. Um, I don't actually think I've worked out either of those days. And so just nailing my calories, going for walks and adjusting the way I was eating to a more, you know, higher satiety side of the spectrum wasn't really the end of the world. Um, it was on day three. So I guess I, I ended my cut on day four here, but it was on day three that I had a soccer game. Um, it was maybe 8 p.m. game, and I was going into the game quite hungry. I don't know why the hunger hit me so hard on day three and it hadn't hit me on day one or two, but I was pretty damn hungry. And I know that I'm going to be hungry. I understand this process. It's not like a, I was like, oh, shit, who would have thought I'd be hungry? Of course I knew I'd be hungry. Um, but during the game, and again, this is like, this might not sound important to people, but um, playing soccer is actually one of the highlights of my week. I'm, I'm 31 years old. I'm not playing like super competitively, but... You know, Jenna and I, we don't go out, we don't party too much. Playing soccer with our friends, which we have an amazing group, is super, super fun. We play with the same group of friends a couple times a week. I get to play with Jenna a couple times a week. We play on two competitive co-ed leagues, which is so fun. And so I really, really enjoy that. And I'm not so tied to my performance there. This is for fun, 100%. But I can't shake a little bit of the competitive side in me that does kind of want to not suck. And so that game that night where I was hungry and a bit irritable going into the game, I was wiped out. Um, just felt the effects, the fatigue effects, and maybe it was a perfect storm of other stuff, but it was noticeably not fun to play in that game. I felt not fueled. I felt not ready from a nutritional standpoint, from a, you know, uh, having the right sort of like pre-training or pre-performance nutrition over the last 72 hours. And so basically I felt like shit. I mean, let's not, let's not sugarcoat it. I felt like shit. Um, and, and what's funny is like, I normally don't have great cardiovascular fitness when it comes to like playing soccer. And that's not my strong suit. I'm not the person who's like running 24 seven. And so any decrease in my cardiovascular abilities is like notable because I become just like a turret who like can't move basically. And that was really not fun. I was super exhausted. The exhaustion independently, the hunger independently, and the fact that I was kind of just like pissed off that this wasn't fun because I was unable to move without getting super fatigued super quickly was kind of a perfect storm. I came home that night and I was just like kind of annoyed because this was something that is really important to me in my week. And this deficit was going to make it harder, right? That was just the long and short of it. I was like, this is going to make this thing suck more uh, or not to be as fun. This thing that I know is important to me is going to be not as fun. And so that was something that I 
had to sit with. I think we all have to sit with these trade-offs. This was a trade-off I was going to have to make. I'm like, hey, your soccer performance is going to suffer a little bit. I'm not saying that it's, you know, I'm not saying you go into a calorie deficit and all of a sudden you can't do any cardio. That's not what I'm saying. Um, this is a big deficit. Uh, and my performance, you know, it's already not a strong suit from a cardiovascular perspective. And in that moment, I knew that it would not be, I wouldn't be at my best. That is a fact. Whether you're going to say that, you know, being in a deficit doesn't trash your cardiovascular fitness. I don't think it does trash your cardiovascular fitness, um, but I think you're absolutely, you would have to say you wouldn't be at your best. And so I had to think, okay, here's the thing that I do several times per week, three or four times per week that I really enjoy. That is an important part to me to like staying sane. And I knew that it was going to take a hit. So that wasn't fun. I had to kind of sit with that. And for you, it might be going out for a drink with friends. It might be, you know, um, having family over, or, or not that you can't do these things, but the trade-offs that you're going to need to make for your lifestyle, you have to accept those when you go into a deficit. There are going to be trade-offs that you need to make to adhere to your deficit. That is a fact. And we need to look at those trade-offs and say, is that worth it to me? Is the juice worth the squeeze? And in that moment, that was like a big check in the box of like, ooh, this is going to suck. And maybe, you know, I have to recalibrate the scales of whether or not this is worth it. Um, and so I was super hungry that night. I think I, I was decided that I was just going to go a little bit above my calories, but stay in a deficit. So maybe like, maybe I had like 3000 calories or 2,700 calories or something like that. And I thought, okay, that felt fine. Except for that night, I woke up at one o'clock AM, two o'clock AM, four o'clock AM with sleep disturbances. And I know that feeling full well is my cortisol being jacked up, not in a, like cortisol dysregulation is what we would probably call it more appropriately. But I knew, I know that feeling. I don't know if this is something that everybody feels. I know that it is a common symptom, but common is a strong word potentially. But for me, sleep disturbances, when I am in a high cortisol, high stress state, they come on strong, they are tangible, they are noticeable. I'll wake up way too early and not just wake up too early, but I'll be very alert. And that is that cortisol jacking you up and waking up in the middle of the night, super alert, like not able to go to sleep. Not just that, but like very awake, like your eyelids are like bursted open. Um, and for me that when that happens, like it just sets off a cascade of me being kind of pissed off about, about everything. I really need, not need my sleep, but I notice you know, I can function decently well on, you know, whatever, five to seven hours of sleep, okay. But if I'm waking up every hour and my sleep is just shit, then the rest of the things that I care about in my life, they suffer. My work suffers, my creativity suffers. You know, I'm, at this time I was kind of going through a place where it was taking me a lot of emotion to kind of get up and make contact content every day. And so for me to be doing that in a suboptimal cognitive state where I'm like a little pissed off, a little bit irritable, a little bit stressed out, really was kind of this perfect storm of not wanting to do this anymore. I was like, I really want to eat. I don't want to be hungry. I need to make a, a podcast today. I have to make some videos today. And, and I just didn't in that moment. And it's, it's funny because as I'm saying this, people are gonna be like, oh, you just like, bitched out of doing the, like, it just got hard and you quit. It's not that it just got hard and I quit. It quickly became apparent to me that I didn't want to make the trade-offs that I had to make. And that is, the, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Like the, 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 the thing that everybody should be doing is is calibrating what the things are in their life that are worth it. What are the trade-offs I need to make for certain goals and do I want to do that? And so it became very apparent to me that between my inability to perform in something I really liked, which was soccer, for me to feel irritable and not cognitively my best, I had a low motivation that, that fourth day to like get up and do any sort of content creation. I was a little bit more food focused, a little bit hungrier, a little bit more fatigued. And that's on day four. And the reason that I'm saying that is like, that is not gonna happen for everybody. Most people are gonna, nah, let me just choose my words carefully here. Um, if you're in a well-designed calorie deficit with a good foundation of nutritional habits, a good foundation in terms of mindset around this whole thing, the deficit's not gonna be hard on day four, it's not. But for me, who was probably already carrying more stress than I gave myself credit for, and for somebody who had a really weak reason for doing this anyway, it was not that the academic side of things isn't important, not that I won't return back to that sort of goal because I probably will. Not that, you know, doing it with Jenna wouldn't be something that in some part would be enjoyable. It's just none of those things, you know, I'm already a healthy body weight. And that is, a, uh, sure, you could say, okay, privileged statement. But the truth is I'm already at a healthy body weight. Uh, and I wanted this purely for fun, for aesthetic, for academics. And there are people out there who listening to who are in a place where if you get your blood work done, you're metabolically healthy, you are a healthy person, you, you're fit, and you want more. And that's cool. If you want to do that, that's awesome. In my context, in my experience from where I'm currently at, moving that needle to even leaner quickly became not worth it. 
And I, and I, you know, I'm not saying it's not worth it for you. Again, you get to decide if that's the case, but please take from this podcast that if, you know, anybody can do this, but specifically for those who are like kind of, you know, already in a, a potentially healthy body weight, which is funny because the fitness industry is full of people who are already healthy and are still not happy with their bodies and, and still want more. And to those people, just make sure you're considering the trade-offs. Like, just make sure you're considering, is this worth it? Do I actually want to do this? Would I be happier saying, you know what, these trade-offs suck and it's okay if I have a couple extra pounds of body fat because my life's a whole lot better and I don't wanna make those trade-offs that I need to make to lose the, the last five pounds or whatever. Um, and so, you know, yeah, that recalibration of whether the juice was worth the squeeze happened on day four for me. I knew in my heart the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. Yes, I'd be leaner, but so the fuck what? Like, it just wasn't something that was going to make a big difference to me. Academically, when I say that, I mean just from like an experience standpoint, this as as a coach is important to do sometimes. It's important for me. You know, I did an 18th, I did an 18 month gain back in 2000, I think, uh, or into the into 20. Sorry, Jesus, uh, into 2020. And then did, uh, I think, a 16-week cut. And so I gained like 27 pounds over those 18 months. And then I cut off like 21 of those pounds. And it was a big endeavor. And I learned a lot in that gain. And I learned a lot in that cut. And I want to make sure that I'm in touch with some of that stuff periodically throughout my career. This just so happened that my stress glass was higher than I gave myself credit for. Um, and again, I'm not saying that, you, you know... It, I just knew that trading away my energy or some of my energy, my cognition, my some of my like good feeling around what I was doing, I was already irritable, trading away some performance wasn't something that I wanted to do right now. And that's like the entire, that's the one thing you take away from this podcast is understanding that checking in with yourself and, and you know, Aaron Straker and I talked on the previous podcast about this like self-awareness. And so... You know, I viewed this as a success. And so we talked about like, what are the traits of our most successful clients? And one of the ones that I brought up was, and I think we had a good discussion on was self-awareness. And in this context, it was the ability for me to be self-aware enough to know that I did not actually want what my brain or like lizard brain thought I wanted. I didn't actually want to do that thing. And I think a lot of people would be happier being, a, you know, if they cultivated a bit more of that self-awareness around what they actually are willing to give up for certain things. Um, and again, you know, I view this as a success because I was able to come out of it knowing that what I'm doing now, which is back to maintenance and a high, the high end of maintenance, potentially even just, just teetering into a surplus, I'm knowing now that I am in the right place where I want to be. And it, it, there is no blanket version of success. Success is not losing weight. Success is not gaining weight. Success is not getting stronger. Success is you feeling good about the decisions that you make. It's about understanding the pros and cons of the choices that you have, making a decision and feeling good about that decision. Whether everything works out perfectly like you had originally planned, that is not what success is. Success is being in a place where you have made informed decisions. You're making the best decisions at hand with the information you have at the time. The information I had at the time was I was irritable as fuck, stressed out, wasn't performing well, wasn't sleeping well, already was in a higher stress state around work, really didn't want to add that hunger and fatigue and irritability to my plate, and really just knew that at this moment, the thing that actually is most important to me was just feeling really good so that I can be the best coach, so that I can be there for the people in my group, so I can be there for my one-on-one -on -one clients, so I can make content, so I can make podcasts and YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and all the shit that we have to do as content creators. And not asking for sympathy here. This is a, you know, I love my job. Uh, I really love my job, but there are ebbs and flows to the, to the social media game that had caught up to me a bit and it just was a perfect storm in that moment. So I very much view this process as successful on the other end of this. Like before I did this cut, the thought of doing a cut took up rent, took up space in my brain, lived in my brain rent free. And I thought about it often. I was like, you know, you should do a cut. You know, you should do a cut. You know, maybe you're like, you could lose seven or eight pounds. You could be shredded. You know, you could, um, you know, you could go into this with Jenna. You could use this as an, an opportunity to experiment. And those thoughts are running through my head. And I, and I was having this like built up feeling that, oh, I have to do that. And it was creating its own stress. And so by doing it, I thought I would relieve that stress. I was like, all right, why don't I just do this? And obviously it's a living in, you know, in your brain is something that you want to do. 
And now, after having gone through it and actually deciding that I did not, in fact, want to do that, it doesn't live in my brain anymore. Like, there is no more, like, oh, well, maybe you should... It's like, no, you shouldn't. You you tried that. You experienced it. You gathered some data, and you realized that isn't actually what you want to do. Um, okay. So, hopefully that rant was even remotely helpful. Remember, this is just my experience. Um, I have... I, the only thing I want you to take away from this is that you should try and cultivate some um, some higher amount of self-awareness uh, about what you want and what you're willing to give up to get that. Uh, I think assessing the trade-offs and recalibrating, maybe not, you know, not questioning yourself every single day, waking up like, should I quit today? Should I quit today? No, but, you know, periodically, metaphorically putting things on the scale and deciding if things are worth it. Um, you know, and again, if things are really worth it, that does not mean it will never be hard. Even if things are worth it, it's not like, you know, just because you decided that it's worth it doesn't mean you'll you'll go through the entire thing without ever being uncomfortable. Of course not, but it's going to help you. You know, what is resilience? Resilience is knowing that this delayed gratification is in line with what you want. And what is people are like, it's not motivation, it's discipline. Like, what is discipline? Discipline is, you know, a an ability to check in with that part of your brain that knows the greater good that you're after, that knows that the thing that you are going to get at the end of this rainbow or this pot at the end of the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is worth it. And so that's like a, a you know, and I call it like a little bit of a superpower is like being able to touch, you know, connect with yourself and say, is this something that I actually want? Are these trade-offs that I actually want? Why am I, why is there a part of me that actually wants this? And to be honest, there there might still be parts of me that want to do that cut, but there are more parts of me or a greater piece of this scale that does not want to do that. And so it's never going to be this, oh, I don't want this thing at all. It's going to be on the net balance of the pros and the cons. I've decided to do X. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. This podcast is also up on YouTube. If you have not come to check us out on YouTube, come and check us out on YouTube. And I say us, I just mean me. It's a weird way of saying that, and I will see you guys in the next episode.